shoulder, dear listener or viewer, welcome to Zealand. Now, Zealand is set in a post-apocalyptic world, so it goes without saying that we will be exploring some of the darker natures of humanity. So if you're squeamish or the idea unsettles you, take your chance now to walk away. For now, we return to Zealand. Kia guys, gals, and legionnaires. Rikon here, welcome back to Zealand. This is chapter two, part three, Terra Mortis. We're back with the team. We're just outside of Whangarei at a small boatyard. Traveling from there with two Russian comrades who are taking you to a old New Zealand Defense Force supply cache of sorts. You don't know what to find waiting for you there, but you know that they have lost four people and they haven't heard from them. They were heading to this place to get the supplies that they need to defend themselves, perhaps to even uh, remove those that seem to be uh, plaguing them, in a sense. You're working with them for a number of reasons, in part for some supplies yourself to be able to get ammunition, weapons, but also to hopefully save the life of Max, who is currently back on their large fuel ship, getting treatment as we speak. It is later in the day now, it's in the afternoon as you start your journey out towards this place. Following a crude map that's kind of been drawn for you, both Nick and Jake start making their way ahead of the group. Not far, but 100 meters ahead at any one time, so there's just the two of them moving in front of the rest. You begin to leave the boat sheds behind, moving off and into a area that seems to be quite overgrown, and it's hard to tell what it might have been at one stage. It could have been a work site, a construction yard, but there isn't much to it now. It's just overgrown, covered with weeds as you start moving through this space. How are you all moving? Are you just kind of walking or are you trying to stay hidden? Are you trying to be quiet with your movements as you're making your way through here? Nick and I are ninja running. Nick and you are sneaking? Sneaking at speed. Sneaking at speed. Okay, well, if that's the case, I need both you and Nick to roll stealth for me. This is just challenging. It's as it is. Pass 33. Pass 25. Okay. All right. Good to know. What about the other three that are uh, taking up the rear with both Rudd and Ismar? So we, we want to be quiet, not yeah. draw too much attention. Not specifically on. sneaking, but trying to still stay. Yeah, just walk and pay on at yeah. a pace. Yeah. Just walking? Yeah. Yeah, pa pace yep. walk. Pace, pace, walk. Pace. Pacey walk. Okay. All right. So you keep up this pacey walk. Um, tr you can see you can see Nick and, and Jake just slightly ahead of you from time to time. You do lose them, but it seems like they're moving pretty quietly, and you, and you guys are just staying back a bit, letting them kind of lead the way and perhaps trigger anything that might be ahead of you. I believe it's called a power walk. Yeah. 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 You continue moving throughout this space, making your way down into fields, and fields where the grass is overgrown. It is like up to your up to your knees in some areas and higher in others as you start to kind of wade through this area here. As you are moving through though, uh, for Jake and Nick, it does become apparent to you that this way was walked. You can see bits of the grass that have kind of been downtrodden that in some areas it's come back up and others you can you can kind of make out a little bit more of a trail and you 
you find yourself naturally following that and it does seem to mirror up to this kind of crude map that Ismail has has drawn out for you. Uh, and those of you who are traveling with them, you can see that he keeps on referencing this every now and then as you continue to move further through the fields. And you stick to them for the most part, trying to avoid any buildings or structures that you can see off to the sides. Uh, and when you do kind of get closer to those buildings, you do see kind of Ismail and Rud just kind of like getting a little bit lower in the grass as they start moving through with both you and uh, and Nick making your way ahead of the group. And this continues for a while um, without kind of provoking any immediate interest from your surrounding area. You continue through this kind of waist deep grass, making your way along a tree line into what is something of a depression before you start making your way out, you know, back up and out of this field towards a roadside. All the while, you're following this trail, a trail which seems to have been walked a few days prior. The closest that you get to a home is at this point here, as you're making your way up through these fields and uh, and moving across. There doesn't seem to be any activity, but you can see that the door to this property is open. There's a vehicle out the front with open doors as well. It seems like it's been there for quite a while. The wheels deflated in the vehicle sagging like uh, some of the others that you've seen earlier. Still, no sound. You're near a forested area off on your side, and you just don't hear any birds. Occasionally there'll be, the, there'll be a cicada that goes off, not too far from where you are, but it's still, it's, it's very, very still in this area as the wind is just kind of carrying. Um, you all still have your respirators on at this point, your gas masks and your filter masks. And, you know, you do keep on looking up towards the sky and towards the trees, looking to see if you can find any source of the pollen or, you know, whatever it was you were seeing in the previous session. But none. You don't see any. Do any of you feel comfortable enough to take off your gear as you're moving through? Nope. No. Um, no. But I, I do, I guess, if we're ahead, probably say we're going to check out the house and then wait for them at the house. You're going to check if, out the see house? See if there's a good sort of rendezvous point. Okay, all right. Uh, so, before the rest of you see this place, Nick and Jake decide to investigate. We were obviously ready and say, hey, we found a house. We're going to go check it out. It might be a good rendezvous point. Um, you hear back on the radio. We shall stick to our plan. No deviations. We've been out before. Sometimes just need a, need a place to meet up. Don't go stirring up any shit. Can't be that. No shit stirring. Okay. Alright. As you start moving down towards this property, I need both you and Nick to roll new stealth checks for me as you start to make your way down there. This is challenging again, so no modifiers. Um, pass. Uh, what did you pass on? 12. 12? And Nick? 46. Okay, alright. 46, pass. Alright. Nick, you're really quiet as you start making your way down towards this building. And it is quite a large building, quite a large um, home. It seems to be part of one of the um, the farming groups that's around here. There's a large shed off to just the uh, the east of this place here. Uh, but you kind of slowly make your way down through the grass, climbing over the fence towards the property. As you start to get closer, I need both you and Nick to roll perception for me. Failed by one. Pass. What did you succeed on? Uh, 51. Pass. 51, so pretty decent. Okay. Alright, so you start to slowly make your way up towards this building, the two of you sneaking, moving towards it. And as you're kind of going past one of these windows, moving towards the front door of this place, Nick, you hear something inside. You just hear this... As soon as I hear, I sound a jig. Okay, you hear a... (laughs) 
almost sounds like the beach, like waves. But it seems human. That's not creepy. You did actually hear that, Nick. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, again, I signed to Jake just that I hear breathing. Should we engage or... And where from? Should we engage or... We're signing, obviously. Um, should we engage us or... Just go back? No. No, I signed no. There was two questions there. <laughs> yeah, they, they, uh, just we should not engage. engage. You're really yeah. quiet. What, did you what was the other question? Uh, I was asking, do we engage or do we retreat? Uh, we don't engage, we retreat. Alright. We will back right up. Okay. As you start to back away, I need you both to roll stealth for me again. Uh, 63. Okay, and Nick? Sorry, Nick, uh, roll stealth for me again. I lost it's... audio. Okay. Uh, yeah, past 20. 20? Okay. All right. The two of you move away, feeling like you're unnoticed, making your way back up onto the field, following your track to, to make your way back towards where this other trail was. Back by the tree line. Do you start following it again? Uh, yeah, radio through... Uh sound like there was a dead in the house. And you did not stir? No, we were, we were pretty quiet. Thank you. You continue on. You continue on. With making a mark for which way to go. Because if they're following footprints and grass, they might follow the other ones. Okay. You go over towards the tree line, you snap off a branch, just leave a little arrow on the ground for them to follow. And the three of you do, along with Ismail and Rud, you follow this trail. You see this property just down off to the side, seeing the similar thing to what the others had seen so far. You continue along this trek, making your way up along the tree line, up onto a hill. It's a it's it's a fair walk to be able to to get back up this thing, um, and it's not as heavily. Uh, grassed on the way up here so you do see you do feel a little bit more vulnerable in terms of sight from down below as you continue to move making your way along a path that takes you towards an entry point that's been marked on your little well basic version of the roadmap that Ismail made for you do you continue or do you wait here nah uh, we'll radio through that we're at the entry point I'll wait for you guys. Okay. Before long, the rest of you clamber back up along this hill, moving alongside these larger structures up on the side, trying to be a little bit more cautious once you get up there. You feel a little bit more vulnerable now. You're away from the grass. You're a little bit more visible. You all take your time before you eventually meet up with both Nick and Jake up on this hill. You're able to see oh, the surrounding area a lot better, and looking back down towards Fangarei, you can see this just kind of cloud that's just rising up from looks like the main township it does seem to be more centralized around certain areas than others but you can definitely see what you saw in the last this kind of cloud of almost pollen just being carried through the air again not seeming to be near any large sources of trees or or flora are we seeing some like, sort of an origin point or where this is coming from? Not it's from up just here. In the... No, it just uh, it seems to be rising up from the buildings. Just from the buildings in general is just... Because you can't see past them. Right, so, okay. Yeah. Because it's not quite a bird's eye view. It's uh, no, a we, get, we can see like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we have time, I think we need to have a proper investigation of that. Yeah. The priority right now is, is gathering, finding these people, gathering supplies. Um, but that's also something new. Yeah. I mean, the second always... boat on the way back can detour off and possibly carefully gather... look around, maybe. Um, possibly gather a sample for, um, for his friend in the roof. Uh, we, we don't have any ability 
I don't know what that is, and if we don't have anything properly designed to contain that sort of stuff, don't want to take it back to people. Probably quite air tight containers. Do you? Yeah. Fucking hell. You know. <laughs> That's why we keep an inventory, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly why we keep an inventory. Precisely that reason. I have three air ca- tight containers with lids, <laughs> obviously. There you go. We. Yeah. Nice. We can gather some, take it back to uh, Skulk, and see what he finds. Yeah. If we risk it. If we risk it. If we bring that back, he doesn't look at it at home, though. No. He looks at it in the middle of the fucking ocean. He takes a boat out and goes out there. Nowhere near us. Yep. We need to press on. Let's go. Well, Nick and I'll head out again probably <clears throat> because we're getting close to the point eh? so probably not as far as we have been um just far enough for us to you know give an early warning so we can hide quickly and then give it warning mm-hmm. so the group doesn't get seen so don't mark it off yet or well no we haven't been able to collect it. you know near it yeah 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 yeah, this yeah it's more than more the township wasn't it yeah. yeah yeah so you start making your way down a long winding driveway moving through the bush on either side of you that bush eerily silent. No sounds of birds. The occasional cicada, cricket, making some noise. But you push on, just hearing your footsteps. But you and Nick trying to be a little bit more cautious as you start making your way along. Ismail at this point has his AK out in his hands. He's just kind of looking all around. I'm assuming his AK has a magazine. It does actually have a magazine. <laughs> it does. Indeed it does. Uh, and Rud also carries with him a very similar weapon. Looks slightly different, slightly elongated, slightly larger than his. Similar design though, it seems. Um, These two seem a bit more trained than the the guys carrying the Rambo guns. They seem to, yeah. And they've, you know, they've got their packs with them. Seeing them get their guns, I'll also grab my rifle and keep it on hand. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Throw knives. Gonna Ready. take the time to slowly, under my arm, cock back the, the hand crossbow. And oh, yeah, 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 yep. Yeah. Just have got some some free time. Well, Everyone else is arming up, so I'll arm up as well. <laughs> you continue. Nick, do you get your arrow ready? <laughs> continue underneath this canopy. Sorry, what was that? Just saying, um, we're all arming up. You get your um, bow and arrow yes, ready? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay. You continue under this canopy, following this winding road, leading up to a hill. This is going to look a little strange to you, but just to give everyone else perspective. Uh, this is uh, a reasonably high point that it seems to sit on top, and you can see these buildings that are up there. You follow this uh, roadway along, winding around past a few what seem to be homes. No activity from what you can see. You follow that winding road all the way up to this point here. And you can see there are a number of buildings. Once you're gonna get a little bit closer up, um, Ismail is pointing you in the direction of one of them. It's this one that's all the way back here. And this is the one that's also marked on your map, Jake. Are you and Nick still ahead of the others? Uh, no, by that point, when we sort of got up to there, at the end of that road, would have stopped and, and waited for everyone. Okay. Let the others kind of catch up with you? Yeah. I was trying to stay out of sight. Yep. And keeping an eye out on well, everywhere. Yeah. All, all around here, the, the area that was once manicured and well cared for, has become overgrown. Even the the road itself, where there's kind of gravel, um, weeds have started growing up in this place, and it doesn't look like anything's driven along here for a good long while. The trail you've been following the entire time, it's very more, it's much more difficult to follow at this point, uh, but you can still kind of make out where people have been semi recently as you start to make your way down towards this building. It's a little blocked at first by a tree line. Once you round the corner, you can see the building a little clearer. And out the front of it, you see a number of bodies lying on the ground. You see a number of bullet holes that seem to be along the side of this building. 
and one large door that has been opened. Looks like a, like a large kind of roller door has been opened up. It's very dark on the inside, you cannot see. The bodies that are on the ground from distance, as soon as you round the corner, everyone just stops, holds in place. The bodies seem to be wearing very, very worn clothing. Clothing that's barely holding onto their bodies. You can see this dark kind of blood that's poured out of them. And the bodies themselves look like they've been dead for a long time. From what you can kind of gather from this distance, these are the dead. Shambler's lifeless. Can I get all of you to roll perception for me? Just in the position that you're in before you start moving up. Thirty-nine success. Thirty-nine success? Thirty-one success. Nope. Nick, any luck? Fifty success. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Not only does he like obviously succeed a lot, he kind of actually succeeds <laughs> quite high as well. Yeah, yeah. he does. So, <clears throat> amongst these bodies, there's about four of them in total on the ground. There are a few patches of blood that looks fresher towards uh, this building. That bird is just going nuts. I don't know what mm -hmm. it's doing. There are no birds. There are no birds currently going nuts in the game. Uh, but up towards the building, you can see that uh, on, on part of the wall, there is like a, a just a redness that's just this, almost looks like a, a squirt of just this red blood that's up against the wall. Ismail sees this, and he starts moving up, and he's kind of got his gun out and ready, and Rud as well. They both kind of like start heading out, just in a semi-crouched position, just like weapons out and at the ready, just kind of scanning this area here, going over towards it. Follow behind them. Okay. The rest of you start moving up behind them. I'm staying at the back of the back of the group, bringing up the year. We're keeping an eye out for the uh, distance. Um, yeah. Okay. So, looking out towards this, you can't see any other bodies. Just the bodies of the of the lifeless that are laying here. So there's bullet holes in the wall, right? Yes. Um. And we're able to see, so what kind of wall is it? And like what's the material? And what I wanted to see is which way the bullets sort of went. They go into the building, out of the building. It looks like they, well, this is an investigation. So roll investigation when you get up close. It's going to give you a, a there's a plus 10 to this. All right, yeah, plus 10. Okay, um, it's very clear to you that the bullets came from outside. Um, it wasn't close to it. There's no residue of where it was. Um, as for direction, it's very hard to determine where it kind of came from. Uh, but you're not seeing the bullets near any of the kind of blood that's up against the wall. Oh, okay. What's everyone else doing? Keep an eye on the, the dead that are on the floor. Okay. For any sign of movement. All right. You said the, uh, the blood coming out of the dead was dark and yeah and the blood on the wall is proper red definitely not it looks fresh and it looks like it might have come from something living uh i guess uh just to double check we'll just uh stab all those dead in the head i was just gonna go check double tap <laughs> okay yeah, so, so just sort of go but go you know get up to them and be like yep yeah, you do you start going around stabbing the rest uh while you're doing this both ismail and rude like through hand signals move up on either side of the of the open the big open roller door they wait for a while as you're going through and doing this action on the outside and then they both turn and they go inside the building i'm following them yeah i follow them okay after like i see he's doing that i'll follow the rest you're gonna follow him cool okay all right, so... So you guys all followed as well, eh? Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Jake and Scott are at the rear of this as you all start to move into this darkened space together. And it is dark. Looking in here, it does seem like at one time there would have been a number of supplies up here. There are the shelves upon shelves upon shelves upon shelves. 
um, where there are, there looks like there are still some supplies there. There are a number of like MREs that seem to be stacked. Um, well out of date. Just having a quick look at them as you kind of go in. There isn't anything immediately in this room as well that leads you to be anxious or on edge and the others do kind of put down their weapons and they start just looking through this area seeing what they can find at a glance there aren't any uh weapons or ammunition that they were looking for here specifically i've still got my gun at three okay um is there any further blood that we can see in here roll investigation for me dan Pass, 11. Okay, so while the others are kind of like having a look around, some of the others are just starting to come in. Uh, you start having a look around to see if you can find any other sign of, of blood, and you do. Further back into this building, um, up against one of the um, shelving units, you can see uh, it looks like it's kind of pulled slightly, and you can almost make out like a hand that seems to be gripping onto um, the shape of a hand, gripping onto... Uh, like part of the shelving. You can see like fingerprints. It's just moving further back into the to the building. Oh, it looks like it doesn't lead anywhere. There's no door or anything that it's just up against a part of the shelving. Go to Ismail and say, we, you guys had no idea if this place was had supplies? Or so he's kind of looking through everything at this point? As far as our intelligence went, it was good. There should be supplies here. The fact that there isn't means that it might already be taken by the team that we sent here. Who gave you, who gave you the intelligence? One of our own on our ship. Worked for the Defense Force back in the... the like the the eighties. Do we see um where stuff should have been? Like you know, uh, roll investigation for me. Lack of dust and all that sort of stuff. Start searching. Is there? Is this just a single room, or does it look like? It is one large room. It is it's one large space. Yeah, it's one large warehouse space. I'm keeping an eye on uh, Ismail and. I uh, in what way? Because you said you had your gun out before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Don't make that so mistake I, again. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not pointing my gun at them. <laughs> I, I've got my gun at the ready. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I've. They're always in my line of sight at, all, at any given time. Okay. Uh, and my what? There's 47 pass for that investigate. 47 pass? Fantastic. Um, so, while well, everyone's kind of having a look around. Um, some are just kind of like keeping an eye out on the area and the rest and, and aren't searching for anything for sp specifically. Jake, you start to go over towards some of the shelving units um, where it seems like there is a, a lack of uh, equipment there. And having a look at the space uh, where there is emptiness and kind of going down underneath the shelves, um, there is a distinct lack of dust under these areas. So it does lead you to believe that there were there was something here and there isn't any more. Uh, we, we didn't see any tire marks or anything on the outside. No one's looked yet. Not not any that were uh, visible, directly visible. Oh, well, yeah, but uh, again, we're all pretty quiet in there. Um, but you know, there's, there's there's no dust here. Uh, so whatever was here has been moved somewhat recently. There's bloody handprints back here. Whoever was. I heard outside it looks like they at least came in here for a, a short time but it's just tucked in this back corner there's no way up from here be able to see behind the the shelving is there any like can you see through the shelving is it like open back shelving yes it is you can just see the wall on the other side just the wall of the of this building What's up look like? So looking up, it's an arched roof. Um, the shelving goes up pretty high. Um, 
but not like right up to the roof. There is like a lot more space to the roof itself, but looking up, you can just see the roof. It is quite dark in here. You're more going off the sight, the light that you've had coming from the outside and any light that you've turned on yourselves. I think we, um, if we go back outside, get, make sure we've got plenty of light, make a bit of noise, see if anything comes. If they're all around here, <clears throat> making that noise might help. I will try call through as well, see if there is anything else we hear. Yeah. If we hear it and know they're nearby, when you call through, we might. Yeah, there is a chance. Go right outside then. And he goes outside and he kind of motions to Rod as well to join him outside. Does anyone stay inside the building? No. Nope. I'm gonna. I, I follow uh, his mom. I'm gonna step outside, but I'm gonna keep an eye just in the darkness above the shelving areas. Okay. I already answered. Sorry. Okay. I, I didn't. I didn't hear you. Okay. Um. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh You move outside. You weren't gonna make it. You make noise. Just a bit of a tap, tap, tap. On the on the structure. Something metal. Knife on the knife on the middle. You know. I'm not trying to make noise around for the surrounding areas. So just okay. within the building. You wait. You stay looking inside as well. Nothing immediately. Give him a call. I am radio. listening for a phone ringing. Ah, oh, he's got radios. Oh, radios. Oh, I thought it was yeah. the um, satellite phone. Satellite phone. He does have a satellite phone as well, but he takes that as a radio. Right, I'm listening for a radio talking then. Privyat? What was yet? Do we hear anything inside? Inside? Yeah. No. Outside. Well, I was thinking maybe if he went back in with the radio. Yeah. Nick, roll perception for me. And the only reason I'm asking Nick is because it's a minus 40. Oh, no, no, no. It only gives me a minus three. Pass. <laughs> you pass. What? what? Sorry, Sorry what, what did, did you roll? roll? 30, 39. 39 what, pass. What's, what am I minusing? Minus 40. Yeah. yeah. yeah audio's cutting out. Minus Sorry. 40. Yeah, that's a pass. Damn. Yeah. Pass by one. So, so Elvin is. What are they here? <laughs> so Nick is a little further away from the group. Is this like the scene as from you, Jurassic Park as where you, as, the dinosaur? As you're uh, standing, as you're standing out here around the around the bodies, you're listening, and you can hear Ismail calling out on his. Nick, you're slightly further away from the group. And you hear Ismail's voice, but you also hear Ismail's voice further away. Very faintly, coming off. Yeah. From this region here. He doesn't see that, but... No, I'm I'm pointing. Oh, I'm pointing out. He no, he doesn't see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He and Nick, the yeah. actual human. Yeah. yeah. Uh, coming off from the far side of the building. Towards, because there's essentially you're surrounded by forest in this location here, and you hear it coming off yeah. from. Does it sound like a radio? Like, what, does it sound distorted? Oh, or it did it... sound slightly distorted, but yeah, again, like it was very faint. It, it perks tell. up your ears. You notice looking around, no one else has heard this. Okay. That's. I, I don't know if I'd bring that up yet, if there's something else. Let's just pique my interest, to be fair. Okay. Well, you know that's what we're here for. <laughs> mm. I, I mean, but, yeah, I would I would have... I would be listening for more. Obviously, I'd be sort of second-guessing what I'd heard. And you see Ismail waiting? He puts the radio away. He takes out his phone. Everybody roll perception for me. Fourteen parts. Oh, 
you from not? Nick, did you roll as well? Yeah. I'd... Okay. Yep. All yeah, right. Passed. So Nick and Scott, you passed, yeah? Yeah. You hear a ringing sound. It's coming from the tree line off to the northwest of your current position. Nick, you hear this coming from a very similar kind of direction to what you heard the other. The sound kind of just slightly reverberating and traveling around the building towards your ears. As you kind of, I'm just like, guys, and I just point my, my finger over in the direction. You see Rudd's just kind of like, he kind of lean around the side of the building and he starts walking in that direction. I follow. Okay. Ismail as well like goes up and he's kind of just got his hand on Rudd's back, almost using him as cover. Just laying around the side of him, just looking towards the tree line. Yeah. Again, I'm careful about being at the back of the party. Yeah. Yep. Just because I want to keep both Rud and Ismail in my eye line. That's my like, line of sight at all times. He's put the satellite phone back into his pocket, but he hasn't hung up the call, and you can all hear this ringing now as you start moving further towards the tree line. This ringing just coming from the edge of it. You start moving closer through this long grass out towards it. Not that far. Come on Google Earth. Work with me. As you start to approach the tree line, I need everyone to roll perception for me. This is going to be sight based, not sound. In case anyone has any sight based specialities. Is this flat? flat? Flat. 48 pass. Cool. 60 pass. 38 okay. pass. 60 fail. Alright, so, Vedant, Nick and Scott, looking out towards the tree line as you start to move towards the sound, beneath the canopy, you can see shadows start to shift and move. Silhouettes of what you think are people that start to slowly stumble out from that tree line whoever's into in, sight. Yeah, whoever's in front of me, I will tap on the shoulder and point. Um, I'll, I'll, That'll be Dan. I'll, I'll tap on the shoulder and point up, uh, point them out. And obviously the the idea would be to relay, relay this to everybody else. Both Nick and Scott, you see this as well. Okay, I, um, Wait. I, I stop Rude and Nick, since I was following just behind them, and I'd like yeah, tap, tap to stop their approach. Yeah, he, he, he holds on to Rude. And I, and I point out the shadows. Do we see them there? The shadows start to move out from the tree line. You see... Cut the phone call. It's a bit late, but... People. Yeah, yeah, he does. He clicks it off. And you see, because they're kind of like looking down in a direction, and they start stumbling out. And they are people. Some of them completely naked with just bits of clothing still hanging onto their skin. Some of it slightly fused to them as they start to stumble out towards you. Their skin like almost a uniform gray color as they start to move out from the tree, slowly moving, loping in your direction. One of the silhouettes seems larger than the others as it starts to come out of there. You see these kind of grotesque formations on its body. Uh, almost protruding from wounds and actually on the back of it you can see what looks to be a smaller being that is moving its arms just contorting as it starts to stumble out towards this much larger thing with these kind of crusty fluid that's been oozing out of it and drying over time and and creating this foul horrible look of a bloated decaying body that is in a constant state of slightly healing and, and, and dropping back down again and, and as this thing moves and, and as these kind of wounds tear and split you can see leaking out from its skin this kind of pollen that just starts to filter in and through the air it's just like should I get some now? <laughs> and at that point as they all start to exit the tree line that is when we're going to enter initiative and begin combat. All right, we are all set up and ready to go. 
What you can see in the instance of them shambling out of there, it looks like you've got about nine of these undead creatures moving out of here, and one that seems a little different from what you've seen so far that's in the center of this group that is stumbling out of the woods towards all of you. Now they do seem to be quite slow, and because of that, Essentially, the way the turn order is working is that all of your athletics is much higher than theirs. Everyone's going to get a go before they get to go. So, who's going first? Uh, I'm going to take aim at the big dude. Okay. All right. Vedant brings up his rifle, holds it in position, and starts aiming towards the big like thing with this other thing attached to its back that's kind of moving about at this stage. As it starts to exit the shadow of the tree line, you can start to make out the true kind of monstrous nature of this thing. Hopefully it's not a warhead or anything. Who's next? So um, in terms of what we're able to do, can I say something and still attack? Uh, if it's quick, you sure can. Alright, be, um... You know, uh... Hey, make, real quick. Make, make, make sure you, you clear your shots and, uh... Um, no, no guns unless absolutely necessary. Okay, you get part of it out during this turn. Because it's, it's, it's quite quick. So essentially six seconds is what happens in one turn, so... You just get that out and you can do something else. What are you going to do? You're throwing? You're throwing one of your throwing knives? Yes, yeah, at the main scary motherfucker. At the scary motherfucker, alright, cool. Do it, son. 61 pass. Ooh, and that would be plus pass. 10 to damage. Okay, alright. Uh, cool. So, that failed by a lot. You weren't aiming? No. Okay, alright. So, uh, that... Mm. So, right now... Yeah, so all it can do at this stage, uh, it's, it's far enough away, all it's going to be doing is dodging. Okay, so, it has gone ahead and failed by... One moment, can you pass? Oh, I've got this here. Let's see. No needs to fail by nine for all undestroyed. Uh, it fails by 73. Okay, so Ooh. that's a hundred percent, like three limbs destroyed. It's bad. It fails bad. I generally roll horrible for defensive rolls and that's exactly what's happened here. Um, you just throw this throwing knife and it just carts through the air and there is this large kind of almost there is a uh, a mammary of sorts hanging out of this clothing and your blade just goes in and it almost bursts forth in this kind of pus like liquid starts running down the front of it and you can see this thing lurch over and there is for a second where it is this absolutely sickening sight as your knife just disappears in this thing and it starts to double over and then continues to lurch towards you. That's your turn, Jake. On to the next. I'll, uh, after finishing up, making sure my respirator's still in place with this, I'll just raise that hand crossbow and I'm taking aim at that big one as well. Taking aim? All right, you start aiming up. On to the next one. I am standing next to the the front line liner person. Um, that's Rude in front, right? Rude. Does he have yep. a gun? He does. Okay, so I'm just standing kind of next to him, um, ready to attack something coming close. Okay. All right. Nick. I will take aim on the zombie on my furthest right. Okay. Yep. So the one on the very end. Good, yeah, spread, spread the shots. Okay, all right, that's Z1. Fantastic, so you're aiming up on Z1. All right, it then becomes Rud and Ismail's turn. So, simultaneously, seeing these things just come out of the woodworks towards them and seeing this big thing that's kind of stumbling towards, it's kind of semi-rising back up as your blade has just disappeared into this thing. They both just start to... <laughs> unload straight towards this thing okay so we're gonna go for Rud first who starts firing <laughs> okay all right um you see a few of his bullets they seem to impact in the torso uh, but it doesn't seem to really do much damage at all it's just 
um, doesn't seem to hit anything vital as just more of these things and with it just this kind of spurt of this of this almost pollenous thing just comes forth from it as more of this kind of like this this pus just starts pouring out of this as it starts moving Ismail the exact same fires and he hits okay all right I'm still intact okay so this goes ahead this is gonna it's failed by 25 he's using a medium weapon and that's gonna bump it up to 55 points of damage at a 54 that is going to be a 45 which works out to be a limb a 45 is gonna put it right on the left arm so it uh, it starts starts to tear into here just this and you see like the bullets just hitting in their arm and it's just mess 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 just like this just this stuff just starting to to spurt more and more out of it and you can just see it just starting to surround it at this stage it's now all of their turn as they start to march forwards oh could someone move me just next to rude next to Aster. yeah there you go they start to move forwards Jesus Christ, that's fast. <laughs> yeah, moving back this turn. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not really that far. You both lost through your luck. Yeah, I'm really good. Okay, and that's what they can accomplish in this turn. Shuffling towards you, this line, this force of these corpses just starting to march towards you. As you all start to hold your ground, those of you that have been aiming, let those shots start to fly out. Who is going first? I'm going first. Yeah, big guy. Take a shot. <coughs> okay. Shot at the big guy. Yep. Fire away. Uh, I'm going to sigil. Well, Come on, well, no, wait, what did you yeah. do? You, so you had half your shoot? Well, you You've been aiming. Right. Yes. <laughs> so half your shoot on top of that. You missed that. That should have been like That's right. Um, <laughs> I was like, what did you five. roll? Yeah, no, 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 no that, that's not right. 72 then, uh, 72 success. 72 success, very nice. Okay, let's go ahead and roll for them. Okay, that's a very similar roll to before. Okay, so... Uh, they go ahead and fail by 29. Oh. So you've got an instant headshot now. Headshot. Headshot? You're yeah. going for a headshot? I'm going for a headshot. Okay, how much damage are you doing in total? you got uh, 29 and... Over 100. Onto, over 100? Oh, yeah, all right. Okay, yeah. So you aim. You're aiming down the sights. You're seeing this. There's these bullets going through as they start to like slowly make their way towards you. This one, it it does seem to be struggling. That knife is in there and it's grinding on something. And you can see like occasionally like a tremble where a leg starts to give out, and then it just forms. It just gets its stance back again as it continues to move forwards. As more of this pus just starts to fall out of its chest and onto the floor these clouds just starting to build up around it you focus on that ugly head you can barely see eyes that are coming out behind these kind of grotesque um crusty mounds of just human fluid that has just solidified over time and grown more and more and this thing's still moving slightly on its back your bullet tears straight through this thing's head it just <laughs> opens up and this this viscera pours out the back of it as it drops face down on the ground <laughs> yay <laughs> okay unfortunately everyone that was aiming at that creature loses their aim yeah. however this turn yeah, just they the can way, start yeah, to aim true. again okay all right so who's next do you want to adjust your aim you can attempt to, yeah. Um, backwards. Yeah, I'll move backwards. Okay. So I mean, if we all move backwards, right, okay. does that mean when they move forward, it's pretty much the same position? Uh, yes, in a sense. Or do we Unless get everyone doesn't move backwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's fine. You can move a little bit further back. Yeah. Eventually, we will reset yeah. if you get any further than that. Yeah, I want to move back. You're essentially out of combat at this point. I'm out of combat. He's running! Well, because you have a rifle and you have, um, you have friends in front of you. 
so uh, they're in between we're more you of acquaintances. and them. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are yes. more of acquaintances than I so I have So you don't you don't have a shot at this stage. Oh, so do I not? No, no. you've oh, got okay. you've got your you've allies got all in between right. them okay. at this stage. But you but next turn you, you can move a, a little shot. bit no, and aim still. Yeah. So you still you still sort of have yeah yeah. Okay, who's next? I'm Nick, just, I'm just going to be Nick's holding my turn for close, um, I might as well, because I've got people. Aim, yeah. so. Well, like, while... So can I kind of hold a... Like, like a ready to attack, but also wait to see if, if Rude comes back and just kind of just step back with him? You can do, yeah. 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 You're just going to try and stick yourself to Rude right now? Yeah. Okay, all right. Sorry, who is going to go then? Nick. Nick. All right, Nick? Um, I'll go. I'll just fire my arrow at the one I was aiming at. That was Z1. Okay, Z1. Fire away, Nick. I rolled a 69 pass. 69 pass. Right, 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 so, but Nick, um, what's what's your base shoot at? 80. 80, so 80 plus 40 is 120? Yeah. So that's 68 passes at 88 pass, eh? Six, 69 passes and 89 pass, 89 pass. Really, yeah. Plus damage of the bow. So no, that's not. You don't add that onto your. No, 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 onto no. Your yeah, roll. Yeah, 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 you add that onto of, damage afterwards, yeah, so it's yeah. not an eighty-nine pass. It's it's whatever his roll was before. Yes, yeah, so what he roll is the pass. So he might pass on a thirty-five. But you pass. To, so when you add the half of shoot, is that to the damage? No, that's to the maximum you can roll. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So his. So then there was one hundred twenty. So the the eighty nine hundred twenty adds goes. to your roll, right? If you go over 100, it's to your damage. Oh, it's your oh, damage. It's damage. Oh, okay. it's damage. Oh, okay. No, yeah, so, so it's still a 69 pass, yeah, yeah. but then it's yeah, an 89 still a 69 damage. Pass. It's a 69 plus pass. Plus weapons. And so flipping that around, that becomes a 96, and then because you're aiming, you can adjust it from there. Yeah. Yeah. The overflow always goes to damage. Anything additional that you do with your shoot, right. so you use half your yeah. shoot to, to, to make it so that you can roll higher, so you have a potential of doing more damage. Okay, so with him, it's not looking great. I'll be honest. <laughs> he fails by fifty. Oh, yeah. Because uh, these things are not oh, very wow. fast, and because you've taken your time to aim, you draw back that arrow, and you are aiming for the head, are you? Yeah. Okay. So flopping, flipping that round though, you're getting a because you have, you rolled a sixty-nine. Right? Ninety-six. So that's ninety-six. So it's pretty far away from the head. How much can you move it by? You can move it by half. 80, so you can, no, full. Full. You can full. move it by your full shoot. By 40. No, you can move it by your full shoot. I don't know where that lets me go. So if you've got a... What's your shoot skill? 16. His, 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 What's your he, shoot he skill? No, 16. My shoot skill is 80. 80. So okay, so... So you can move it to the torso. Yeah, 16. Yeah. So is it not half? Okay, no, it's full. It, you can move it by your full shoot. It, Oh, okay. Okay. That's so that's not including the aim bonus. No, it's just just what your shooters before aim. Okay. So because it was like quite, quite you ended up getting it quite high, ninety six. That's quite a shift to be able to get it. Uh, it does arc up in the air and it is a really good shot, but it just misses the head and it just comes straight in through the esophagus yeah. here, just straight through. And it does seem to pierce the spine slightly from behind, and this thing starts to double over slightly onto the ground flat, but it still seems to be moving. And so, if you could get Z1 and just knock him over for me. But not dead. Remember that. Remember it's not dead. Okay. Who's next? Uh, I'll just shift sideways a bit and retake aim at uh, Z6, is it? Z6? Yeah. All right, Z6. That's my turn. That's your turn? Okay, moving down further. Who's next? Just you now, Jake, mm, right? Um, chuck it at Z2. Chuck it at Z2. All right, chuck away. 36, pass. Okay. All right. Right on. It has failed by 25. Right, so that'd be plus 10 there, there's also 40, 46 damage. 46 damage. And what was your initial roll for location? Right, right arm? Yeah, so your 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 knife just flies through the air and just embeds itself into its arm. Which Z was that, sorry? Uh, Z2. So Z2? Okay. Next okay. Okay. 
All right. You can see it's just like embedded straight in there and it doesn't seem to even respond to the the blade just piercing in there. It just continues loping its way forwards towards all of you. Then I'll move back. All right, you start to move back. You can't move back too far, but you can move back a, a decent amount because you're, you're backing off. Are you turning away to like t- to start running? It's or? just a sort of... Just the way I look at it is, as they're moving forward, I'm sort of moving back. Okay, backing off. All right. Uh, at that point, it's going to come back to Rud and Ismail, who are kind of holding the position that they are at the moment. Um, Ismail is going to move slightly out to the side more so he can shoot around the corner of his friend. Uh, and they start shooting at these two here, both seven and eight respectively. And they just start unloading on them. Okay. Great rolls, guys. Great rolls. That's a little bit better. Um, okay. One of them actually succeeded at a defensive role. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look at that. Uh, so, uh, both of them just continue. They they continue this fire out, out towards them, and you just see bullets starting to like rip and tear into the sides of these things, just <laughs> ripping off bits of clothing as they do, just hitting an arm. There's just a spur of like dark ichor. Nothing that's really finding and making a mark that's going to take these things down. It's just <laughs> see, these are, these guys aren't acting like it's a Rambo movie. They are a Rambo movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're holding their ground and they're firing at these things as best they can. Uh, and they hold their ground and they just stay stay ready it looks like they're they're continuing that con- that almost it's a continuous spring of fire just out towards them cool. so that's, that's it uh, that's their turn yep. right? it's their turn okay and so the ones that were moving here at, and this is like as they're starting to try and move back and and, and move around as soon as you get to the melee i swing at them yep you do get the chance to swing the others continue moving up as well. I'm doing aim shot as well. Stacking that line a little bit. Okay. And even this one. Doesn't get far. Doesn't get far. Okay, so they all continue to start to move up there. Um, you, with them getting closer, and you're starting to back up, and you're starting to try and move back up this hill as you do, and as they're kind of coming Just towards Rude you. Just moving you back. Are, Rude is starting to move back now because they're like right in front of them. So this, they're, they're essentially been unleashing the attack on them as they've been coming towards them, and you're just seeing like, like I said, bits of clothing, bits of flesh getting torn off as they get closer and closer. And then you take an aim strike, and which were you going to go for? You're going to go for uh, eight at the bottom there. So, no, I'm, I'm going to go for the two. one in the middle of the three. Seven. Seven. So you're going to go for seven, all right? Go ahead and roll away. It's 30, pass. 30, pass? Okay, it's going to try and oppose that. As it gets already, so. Oh, far out, come on. All right, so it's opposed, it's bad, it's not, it's bad, but, all right. So it went and failed by 44. Jeez. <laughs> Hit it, destroyed. Yeah, so you just bring that spit axe around. So you're, you've got like your eye on Ruth, and as they start to get in closer there, you just bring the spit axe up and just you bring it down using the full weight of it to cleave its skull in half. As you see, this thing just splits. The brain pours out the front of it down its head as you bring the spit axe back out. This thing drops dead to the ground. Gone skis. All right. They are within reach at this stage. Not enough to be able to get an attack off at this point, but they are close. They're engaging them. It's going to roll back around to the top. Who goes? I'm going to... So if I were to move sideways, mm-hmm. can I get to a point where I can get a... Get a can I, that I can get aim from that one of these guys? Uh, possibly. You can certainly try. Okay, I'll I will try. I will try and move sideways, so that I can aim at Z2. Okay. All right. As long as no one else moves during it, you should be okay. But if someone moves back, there's a chance that they will enter your your line of fire and break that aim. I want to go in to make a aimed kill shot at Zombie Eight. Okay. Zombie Eight, aim kill shot. Go for it, my friend. 
It is going to be opposing you. It's got its hand starting to come up. Reroll. Sigil. Using sigil. a sigil. Using a sigil. 31. Pass. 31 pass. Okay. Let's go ahead and roll for this bad boy. Okay. It fails. It only fails by six, but it is still a failure. So it's a grievous wound to the head. And that is eight? Yes. All right. A grievous wound to the head. Fantastic. So you bring your spadax down on that one. You start bringing this one up and you start bringing it round. And you, those of you that are close, you see the spadax just cleave into the side of this thing's neck and its head just starts to tilt as it's halfway off but you don't get it the entire way through it hits the spine and it doesn't get the entire way through its neck but you do see its head start to roll limply almost to the side as it continues to stumble towards you that is your turn uh same thing as but now but uh just sort of move towards you so i got that line of sight to through that one z4 there so you're trying to go f- between the gap between Nick and uh, and, and Ismail? Yeah. Okay. And uh, just take a shot. Z5? Yeah, so you're just... Yeah, whatever one that is, yeah. Yep, throwing it straight through. Okay, go ahead. Go for it. 47 pass. 47 pass. Okay. Wow. It fails by 74. <laughs> Good. So left leg's gone. Left leg? Oh, yeah, so you, you throw this knife and it just cartwheels through the air and it just embeds in its left knee joint as it just buckles over onto its side completely destroying the the motion of of the leg it's now prone on the ground uh could someone knock that one down and that is uh, nope I'm back. Oh, that one. the one that you can see here it's five. Oh, five. This one, oh, right. that is the one that he can see no, okay. what i did is i threw two knives deflected it and got the other one yeah <laughs> Okay, that left leg is destroyed. Absolutely destroyed at this point. Okay, all right, next turn. Who's up? I'm going to take that aim shot at six. Okay. Oh, this is with your hand crossbow, yeah? Yeah. Mm. All right. That is a 40 pass. Ooh, 40 pass. Okay, and this is at six. All right. Okie dokie. It failed by a 29. Loving their By 29, so that is a 79. Uh, not one more. <laughs> no, it's not quite grievous. Yeah. So it's grievous. Yeah, it's yeah. grievous, not Ooh, quite. Yeah. Grievous one, head. One more and it one would have been more destroyed. Yeah. 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 yeah, you've applied the uh, the damage that the weapon does. Yeah, yeah. Yep, 79. Ooh. Okay. Oh. Close, close, yeah. You do, you do see this bolt just, thump, and it goes through the head, and it just like you can see it kind of comes semi out the other side, but it just kind of turns limply towards you and just eyes you. And can you tell me that number again, sir? Uh, six. Six. Okay. Um. So that's two of grievous head wounds. Sorry, Nick. <laughs> and then I. I'm gonna break your lungs. Have you started the recording? I have. It's the time of the stop. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, and then I would shift back that way. Okay. You start, start taking a shift back. back. All right. Nick. Nick. Okay. Um, where exactly am I? I can see the cluster up the front, but which one am I? You're the ginger I'm with the staff. I'm falling back. I, don't, I can't see ginger. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. I'll just take a shot at the one closest to me, unaimed. Unaimed? Okay, that's going to be Z4. So, roll oh. away. You bring back a, another arrow and you just you yep. let it go right yep. away. 78 pass. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's probably going to be good. Um, It's a fail by 18. Yep, so it's gone. gone. Uh, so, what is that hitting though? It's unaimed. So, your initial roll was what, sorry? 78. 78. Right probably a leg. Yeah, right leg. Yep, right leg. Uh, and that is on... Four. So uh, was four? that what you rolled, or was that plus damage for the um, arrow? That was just what I rolled. That was no plus damage. Yeah. That was so what was the damage for an arrow? Would just be like a knife? Oh no, he's definitely limb destroyed. Well, definitely limb destroyed, yeah. 100%. I thought limb destroyed was over 80. Yeah. Yeah. 
Right, and, and whatever damage. Add damage and yeah. how much he failed by. Yeah. Okay, so. Ooh, yeah, that hurts. Uh, it, it just goes in the arrow, just like like uh, like Jake's. It just embeds straight into its leg, and it tries to continue taking that step, and it just falls over prone on its side. Uh, that was I've oh, You've already proned him. Fantastic. Okay, so he's down on his side at this stage. All right, that's fantastic. That's great. Okay, so that is going to be Ismail and Rud now, who are essentially in melee at this point. They drop the their, their weapons that they have on their side, they take out their knives, and they start to just go ham at these things. Uh, so we're going to start off with Rud, who is going at this thing with a big knife, and that is the one that's in front of him. That is going to be Z9. He's taken an aimed shot, and he's using a knife. Okay, so it's going to be minus 20 in total. Okay. All right, he, that's a straight up fail. So. Why is it minus 20? Uh, he's doing an aim shot. Um, yeah. So minus 10, oh, and minus then 10, yeah. because he's using the knife, that's minus 10 for that as well. Uh, so, so uh, he rolled an 83, which is well, well, well over. Uh, so, which is unfortunate for him. He, ro he rolls in for this attack and just <clears throat> embeds it. Uh, and it, it goes in, but it doesn't seem to hit anything vital. And he is right in there with this one here. Uh, Ismail starts to move up to assist, moving up on Z6. It's close enough that he's just dropped his weapon to the side on his sling and he's taken out a knife as well and he's just bringing it around. He's trying to stab this thing right in the head as it gets up close towards him. And a knife is minus five before I let's roll. They're big. These are big knives. Oh, machetes. They're big knives. They're big enough that they're pretty much classed as them. They're okay. not a knife, they're a knife. They're a knife. Okay. Okay, all right, um, that is a success on his behalf, so let's see if this thing can beat it. Uh, no, it fails by 20, so, all right. Okay, all right, it's enough to do a significant wound to this thing's head as he brings it in. It grinds along the side, taking off one of the ears as he tries to get it into the temple. He doesn't quite get it in there, ricocheting off the cheekbone. It just drags the flesh down on it, and he finds it kind of embedded in its uh, gums as he draws it back out and tries to bring it around for another attack. It's got a knife and an arrow in its head. And that is his turn. Yeah, it does. Yeah, Z6 does. Uh, so that's a sig on there as well okay all right that's everyone's turn and now leads up to them no you said that's everyone's turn that means it's the, that was their turns as well it's back to us Let's try get to some defensive rolls really <laughs> i believe i got two dead the rest of the ladies yeah they're all crawling the yeah we're running actually down two this probably also crawling that one can also crawl. This one's dead as well. Yeah. This one's dead. I'm actually going to take the ones that are dead off. Well, what do you want this one? So when, 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 when that one went down, the yes. thing attached to it stopped moving as well? It's still moving to a degree, but it can't go anywhere. At this point, it's it's not able to do too much. Okay, so first of all, the one that um, the one that's by Ismail is going to try and attack. Um, it's not going to have much of a chance. We will try. Um, yeah, okay. No, that is a that's a big time fail, unfortunately, because it is in a bad position. Um, Ismail is actually in a superior position to it because it's on the floor. It tries to grasp at his feet and he just kind of kicks it away as he's trying to focus on the one that's in front of him, which is going to try and attack him now. And that's Z6, who does have quite a few wounds to its head. It still lashes out to him all the same, just trying to bring those teeth that that knife is embedded in round to his arm. Okay, that is nearly a critical success. Okay, Ismail, do something, my friend. He is going to, he is going to try and, uh, yeah, yeah, he's going to try and like with a pose. He's going to try and use the knife that's in there just to drag the thing down away. At this point. Okay. It's a success, but it ain't much of a success. Okay, so he's going to lessen it by twenty-six. So in total, this thing is doing. Yeah, it's doing 49 damage, minus 26, down to 23, and 23 is a significant wound, is this thing, uh, yeah, with, it just kind of like moves to the side, and that knife just slips out as, uh, 
That would have worked out to be a 93. So that's so his right leg. Right leg, as it kind of like drops down and it just goes for his leg and it just like bites in on his right leg and it seems to be the upper thigh that it's got a bit of a hold on as it's dropped to the ground in front of him and is now going at him. Okay. All right, that is its turn. Moving down to the next one. Number nine, that is with our man Rud, is going into attack, lunging towards him. Okay, it succeeds at its attack, so Rud is going to roll. He's going to try and oppose it with that knife of his. Okay, he does not succeed at that. So, Rud, that is going to be a fail by 13, which isn't too bad because it rolled a 13. So, all in all, that's 26 damage. However, a 31 is going to place that onto his torso. Um, yeah, and so that's... Uh, yeah, 26, that is going to be a significant wound to his torso. As this thing, like, comes in, as he's trying to get his arms up in front of it, it just kind of starts going at his torso. You can't see if it's doing proper damage to him but it's it's on him at this stage and it seems to be really really going at him now the one that's in front of you scott eight is going to go for you and this one does have a grievous wound to its head your axe blade is 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 right freaking in there it nearly has taken its head off entirely but it is still coming towards you those arms reaching out towards you it yeah, is going to attempt to attack you. i'm gonna keep driving it to the side to try Okay. Yeah. 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 Don't, Don't even worry. worry. It's, it's a critical, critical fail. fail. Yeah. And so what happens is it starts to try and lunge in that little bit further and you're like, nah, I got the upper hand here. And you just use your strength to push that spadax through further. And you have a moment where it just slips between two of the spinal discs going through that cord. It carries through the other side and its head rolls back off its shoulders onto the ground. You know these things though. You know that that's not going to kill it. You bring down the the ball end of your spit axe, just <laughs> crushing this thing's head to the ground. Maybe let out a little battle yell as you do. Wow! <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> this, this thing, thing is like, like ocelot. Yeah. Yeah. That is now dead. Get out of here, eight. Get out of here. Yeah, that's two down at this stage. What was your number? You were number seven. Get out of here, boyo. Okay, all right, so the others have moved up at this stage as far as they can. It is back round to all of y'all. Oh, moving in to attack the one that just attacked Rude. Okay, yeah, so you move around to the side there. You are now flanking with Rude, so you get an additional five to your roll at this stage. Aim shot. Aim it's shot. shot. So Howdy okay. doody. So it's... That is a 24 success. 24 success. Um, this thing sensing this kind of like threat coming in from the side brings its arms up as you come around as it sees someone else coming towards it, attempting to oppose you. Oh, my God, my rolls. That was a 97. Uh, oh, wow. It however, oh, does have, damage so far. It does have a fight of uh, 50. So we're going to go ahead and so that's going to be no, what, I, I, 47. I destroyed Oh my god, you're on a freaking rampage. Champion. So after just like smashing this thing round, you see this thing that is just on Rud. You start to come towards it. That that little bit of that war cry you had going before, you carry that on as you bring your axe right down. Just uh, you bring it down right onto its head and it just splits this thing asunder from behind as it starts to drop down to the ground away from Rud. He just kind of looks at you and just goes uh, and, and just, just turns oh, towards. Yeah. yeah. It turns towards the one that's uh, currently facing his friend. That is what number? That is a number nine. Nine? Okay. Number nine. Number nine. Get out of here. I'm going to pull the trigger to yeah. take out that, that one. That's my whole goal. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you have been you've been aiming that you've been aiming that gap. No one's gone in front of it, which is great. Uh, twenty-three success. Okay. All right. It fails by eleven. By eleven. Um, by eleven. Cool. So what? So is that? Uh, that's 23 plus 20 for uh, my weapon. You got rifle lower. What's your yeah. rifle at? Oh, my rifle's at 69. 69. Yeah. So half of that you apply on top to damage. Okay, yes. cool. So that's, that's 23 plus 20, which is 43 plus uh, 
half of 69, 30. You don't buy half of 69, it's a base damage on top of a shoe. Yes, it is base. Yeah, yeah, sorry, if you're not doing over yeah. 100, then it's not count. It's just, it's just, yeah, that's your chance to that's shoot. 40, what do you fail by? Wait, over 100? Because I was aiming, wouldn't that add? Oh, uh, yeah. Are you over 100? Because oh, right. 69 plus 30 something. 30, yeah. And I had 38. So whatever you do over 100 becomes damage. Yeah, so I had 34, which is four, four, three. Three. Yeah, I had three more to that. So that's, uh, <laughs> it all counts. 43, um, 46. What, what did you fail by? 46, and I, I, I already told him, so I failed by 11. Have you applied that yet? No. No. So, so it's Grievous. Add additional 57. It's Grievous. It's Grievous, Grievous. and Grievous. what number are you shooting at? Uh, so that was 32. No, no. that was, oh, was a number you were shooting at. Standing one, yeah. Number two? Okay, all right, that has its that's its left arm is is completely screwed up at this point. So now it has a grievous wound to the head. As your uh, as your bullet like rips through, it finds its mark, it seems to slow it slightly, but its eyes just stay focused on you. Unmoved by the attack, unmoved by the shot, it continues towards you. That's Vedant's turn. On to the next. So we have Vedant, we've had Scott. I'll, can I, I'll just throw at that one that's down there. That's the one, number the one that's on the ground? ground? Yeah, the one that's... Uh, okay, it's going to be difficult for you to hit it oh, while it's prone. Well, I mean, it's, it's on the ground and you're far away. So, all right. How close do you move? That close. Still still difficult. It's on the ground. Um, you, you'll have a chance, but it's a bit more difficult to, to, to shoot, to throw a throwing knife at it directly. It depends. If you want to, if you if you don't want to aim, that's that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll just go for number three. I'm just you know it's a, it's, gonna, it's a little bit more difficult. I'll just go for number three then. Go, go for, for number three. three. Number three. Number three. Who's standing? Okay. All right. So you move it a little closer. You start taking out another throwing knife and you, you throw it in the direction of number three. Throw away. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay. All right. It's going to try and lope out the way. Um. Wow. It's succeeded. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, so it reduces your damage by five. All right, so that's what's your total? four plus ten. So significant. Significant, and what's your location that you're hitting? 24 is what? And 42, and a 42 left is arm. going to be, yeah, left arm. Okay, so its left arm gets a significant wound as your knife just <clears throat> embeds in its arm. All right, that's your turn. Okay, moving on to the next. Who's up? Uh, yeah, well, even like, you and Nicker. Yeah. yeah. Nick? Do you oh, want to go, Nick? Yeah. I'll take a shot at the one I have the best shot on. Probably three as well. Probably three. Either two or three. Okay. I will shoot. I will shoot. I. I will tell you that plus. two has had a grievous head wound already. It's got a yeah. bullet hole that, like, part of its head's already missing. So two is a little bit more injured than three. I'll shoot at 3. 49 pass. Okay, 3. 49 pass. So that only has an, a significant wound to its left arm. It's going to try and roll out the way. It does not succeed at that. So that's going to... That was actually a 69. Okay, so that is a fail by 59. So it's them destroyed. That's a right leg. It's a right leg gone. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, you fire your arrow, you just pull back, draw, and th let it go, and th it hits its leg, and it just drops to the ground, just next to the other one. Yeah. Sort of move back easier now. I got two there, sort of moving at the normal pace. I'll just go and start bashing the heads in. Yeah, exactly. Okay, and that leaves Dan, correct? Okay. Uh, close in on this one that's crawling on the ground, and uh, just leave my... Crossbow behind and pull out that cleaver and. Okay, you are in a you are in a superior position. You have plus forty to your roll. Yep. Because it's prone. And I'll take a aim shot at its head. Okay, take an aim shot. So essentially plus thirty. Yeah. And then your other negatives on top. It's a pass with a twelve. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll see how much that could potentially fail by here. Um. Wow. No, that it failed by nine. <laughs> so that so is significant. Yeah. Uh, what number is that? Number, uh, Harry. Yeah. Uh, that one? Uh, that's, that's number one. one. That's a significant head wound. Okay. 
All right, that's the one where it's had uh, its torso pretty much destroyed and it's on the ground because of that. Uh, and it gets a significant wound to its head as you bring down that cleaver. Just hope you don't quite get through the, the skull, unfortunately, with that hit. Okay. Okay, then it's going to come back around to Rud and um, Ismail, who are going to essentially try and double team this one here. Um, well, we'll see. We're going to start off with, with Rud pushing in there being outmanned heavily by you, which he's not super happy about. So he's going to go ahead and start taking a swing towards that one there. Um, he is going to get a plus five for the position he's in. So it's, it's just, well, yeah, it's going to work out being minus five to, to his skill. So let's see how we do. Uh, minus five, he is going to succeed with a 52. So we're going to go ahead and roll for him. Okay, that is a bad, bad fail. Um, it is going to try and oppose it, so that's a... It's failed by 36. Okay, plus his initial low roll. Plus his weapon damage. It's going to come out to 72 points of damage. Which is not so bad. And that is a grievous wound to... Number 9. Number 9? No, that's number 6. Um, which already has a grievous head wound. So, just finding a little bit more purchase in there, he brings back that knife around and he finds a point right in the temple where it just drives through and this thing just slowly just comes to a stop and starts to drop as he pulls that knife back out of it. It is now dead. And seeing that that's the case, Ismail's going to turn around to the one that's on the floor next to him, and he is just going to go straight down, and he's going for the head. He does not succeed. Uh, actually, no, maybe he does, because he's in a superior position. Ah, uh, no, he does. He succeeds with a 95. <laughs> uh, cool. Cool. So, uh, uh, no, he is. He's aiming. He was going to aim for a head. So, yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's it on that one. I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll for its defense. It's not going to be great. No, we hit rolled a 98. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, yeah, so um, he just he just kind of brings around this knife and just kind of comes down on its head and just impales it directly in the head, taking it off the board. Okay. And that is four. And so with that, we only have four left. Most of them are incredibly injured at this stage, but some of them are still good. Namely, the one that's next to you, Dan, which is going to turn around towards you and start to attack you. That is Z2. Uh, it does have a grievous head wound, and its left arm is rather damaged, but it is still going to try and pull itself down towards you as these kind of lifeless eyes gaze into yours for a moment as it goes into attack. And it fails badly. Uh, it comes in. It stump. You just kind of. You just move slightly to the side as it stumbles towards you. That grievous head wound did seem to do some damage to the senses inside of it. It's maybe not able to see as well as it could before, and it can't quite find you as it stumbles towards you. The one that's at, at your feet, though, is also going to try and attack you. We'll see. It's got a very slim margin. It's well outside that margin as it just kind of crawls. <laughs> It, it just like it, it it starts pulling at your legs this is just trying to bring you down towards it and you are feeling the presence of them around you the two that are crawling are also going to make their way towards you you're the nearest thing to them and they have enough to just be able to make it to you in this turn so both of them are going to attempt to get you however they're they're not in a good position to be attacking you that one fails that one also fails they don't have much of a chance. They they have a minus, essentially, uh, yeah, it's, it's bad. It's bad. They're not in a good position. Uh, the opposite to superior, the opposite to superior position. Uh, they attempt to, but that's the thing is like, they are starting to overwhelm you in a sense that they are all around you and they're starting to clamber up and pull onto your legs. It's a little frightening, to say the yeah. least. Uh, but you try and hold your ground as you, with your one good arm, you're looking around you as they're all there. It comes back around to the rest of you. What are you going to do? Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna 
try and finish off the one I was meat cleavering as it crawls up my leg. Oh. Take another aim shot at its head. Uh, 44 pass. Okay. The one that was trying to go for your head. Okay. 44 Number pass. Alright. Uh, it fails by two. Two? Oops. That is a six. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 56 to the head. 56 to the Grievous. head. Grievous. Grievous? It already has a grievous head wound. And so you, as it's kind of stumbling past you, you bring around that cleaver with your good right arm. You just bring it right around. You match it right in the face, just beneath the eye, as it just goes in to a depth. And then this thing just rolls backwards as you pull the cleaver out of it. It drops dead on the ground. Could you please remove that from there? There are three left on the board. What you gonna do? I'm gonna take aim. Okay, you take aim at that one. You see the rifle go yeah. up? Alright, what's everyone else doing? Just glare at you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm taking aim for a reason. I'm not I'm, I'm aiming so that I don't want a melon. <laughs> I learned from my mistakes. <laughs> Who's next? Um Can I move in closer? You can you can reach him in this turn, definitely hundred percent. Just running towards yeah. them. You're charging, in fact. Yeah. Charging in. Which are you charging? The one that's standing. Number two. That is number two. That is the one that I thought you took down before, but that's fine. We'll change okay. things around. That's all good. So that one actually didn't have a grievous head wound, so we're just translating it over. That's fine. Okay, so you're going for number three instead, we're going to call that one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so am I going to get charging, am I? You are getting charging to this. What's That's 20, is it? 20, and you're also getting plus 5 for your flanking. Okay, so 100. So, so it's true. So, yeah, 100. 100 on the dot. That just offsets all my negatives. Uh, that is an 80. Ooh. So, pass. Okay. Um, it passes with a four. So it's 106 damage to the head. Yeah, that's dead. <laughs> that's dead. Um, Scott just continues his charge, kind of almost pushing Rod to the side as he moves through towards an ally of his who is in danger. And he just comes through and he just brings that axe up and just, um, without trying to endanger Dan by kind of bringing it around this way, you just bring it over your head as you're charging in and you just bring this heavy axe spadax blade down on its head and you drive straight through the back of it splitting the spine in two and driving it almost a good inch into into belief here as the head just starts to split and cave and fall apart as this thing drops down to the ground you see the two that are next to you dan looking a little bit more relieved as that thing is gone out of here how's it going <laughs> better now <laughs> okay looking around to the final two of you what are you going to do go to the um probably number what did one bit? I can't read the number on it, but uh, it'll be one or it's a five. Okay, five, three, and five. I'll go for uh, yeah three, and but I'll be going up close for a yeah a stab. You're in a superior position and you are flanking, so you get plus forty five to your roll from me. And, and can I just switch to a hatchet on the way? Just a to... oh totally yeah. Well, the thing is like when you throw a throwing knife, yeah. you got a hand free, so you just hatch it up. All right, so, so was it plus forty five? Yep. Plus and 45 from me. Minus 10. 10 if you're aiming. Plus 35. And then also the minus of your weapon that you're using. So, so plus so 20. Plus 25. So, so, yeah, so plus 25, oh. so that's 95. And that's 66. Very nice. And then, that, so yeah, 66 for the roll, and then plus plus 86 for the 86. damage. 86. Very nice. 86 is enough to do a kill. Let's see. Uh, no, that's a fail, and it's going to put more additional damage on top of that. You you bring that hatchet down, how, yeah, just like you... Right down into the head, splitting the thing's head asunder. There is one left alive and wriggling on this map. And Nick, you're the last person to go. Hey, uh, can I shoot it from where I am? 
Uh, you can move, move to the side. You can pretty much slide to the oh, side and try and legless this. And then fire a shot it's it. going to be a little difficult to hit him where you are, but you can certainly attempt to do it. I I will give it a try. Do it, my friend. Hey, <laughs> eighty on the dot. Hey. Is it a critical? That's my net. That's a critical. God damn. God damn, Nick. God damn. Oh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so Nick, you 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 start moving around the side of Scott and Jake. You draw an arrow back as you're running. You let this thing loose towards this, and it just goes, just at a, a decent pelt, a speed, and it just thoom, goes straight through this thing's head as on the ground, just embedding its skull to the earth. And with that, everything starts to fall silent, silent except for this thing. On the back of this creature, just this go up and sound. Go up and kill that one. You move up towards it. You bring your knife down on what of a face of a head you can make out, just diving it in there. As you do, more of the goes up around you. You have your mask on, and you feel very grateful for having it on as these things come out and around the body everyone else staying further back I'm saying well back yeah you all start to take a deep breath you look down at yourselves the dark blood of these things all across you arrows and throwing knives embedded in them and the area around you fall silent those gunshots that you fired in the distance start to subside those echoes that you heard throughout the valley have stopped it's quiet Again, no other sound around except for your heavy breathing as you all start to take a second to have a look around at everyone. Ismail and Rude kind of go over to each other and they look like they're kind of checking each other and stuff like that. And Ismail, with like a little bit of a laugh, gives them like a pat and stuff like that. Are they bleeding? You're all starting to take a moment and you go over to start to investigate them. And as you do, that's where we're going to be bringing this session to an end. We will see you all next week for the conclusion of Terra Mortis. Please do join us there. Our survivors have survived for now an encounter against many of the dead, proving themselves to be capable enough to make it in this new world, at least for a little while. We'll see if that continues. I've been Rykon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, stay breathing. <laughs>